Hey everyone, this is Rohan Shah with BestEconTutor.com and in this video we'll be talking about tax burdens, dead weight loss from taxes, and subsidies. So, let's now look at what would happen if there was a $3 per unit tax on a market. Now, here's the biggest misconception. The biggest misconception is that a $3 tax will increase the price by $3. That's not the case, and let's see why. So, to really understand what happens when a tax is imposed on a market, let's think of what the supply curve really means. So, supply is really another word for marginal cost, meaning the cost of one extra item. Now, Suppose that the business has to pay the government $3 for every item that they sell. Really what's happening is your cost of production goes up by $3 per unit. So really what needs to happen for a, uh, for a tax uh, to be represented here is that the supply curve needs to move upwards by $3 because again the y-axis here is measured in dollars. So it needs to move up by $3 at every point to represent that shift. So. Uh, to put that in, technically notice that's a decrease in supply. It's a leftward shift, even though it's moving up. It's really left. It's a decrease in supply, but to get the units correct, we need to move it up. So every single point. So for example, this point is 100 comma 10. It's now going to become 100 comma 13. This point, which is 80 comma 9, is now going to be 80 comma 12, right? Because 9 plus the $3 tax. So 80 comma 12 and so on. So technically, as long as you make two points, that's enough for you to draw the new, you know, you could just draw the new supply curve, but really you can move every point that you're given if you want. So this is the new supply curve with the tax. Now, a couple things. Notice that this is parallel to the old supply curve, but notice that the new intersection between supply and demand is at 80 comma 12. So one thing to notice here is that the equilibrium price didn't go up by the full $3. It went from 10 up to 12. So it was only a $2 increase in price when the tax was $3. So another thing to notice is that it wasn't even a, an equal burden. So let's first talk about burden of tax. Even though we assume for all these problems that the producer directly pays the government, doesn't mean that they actually have all the burden of the tax. It might seem strange, but here's the thing. They're kind of passing some of that burden onto the consumer by raising the price. So if they have to pay $3 to the government, well, they're now raising their price in this case by $2. So really the consumers are paying $2 out of the tax and the producers are only paying the remaining $1 out of the tax because the producers, out of the 12 that they're getting from the customers, uh, after paying the $3 to the government, they're getting to keep nine. So this $9 is the price that the producers face in the market. But on this $12, that's a price that the consumers face. So just to recap, a $3 tax, what does it do? In this market, once we shifted it physically up by three everywhere, we have a new supply curve. And now we're just going to look, where does the new intersection? That intersection, that's the price for the customer. It's typically going to be higher than the old price, but not higher by the full amount of the tax. Then for the producer's price, it's really just that the new price for the consumers minus the tax amount. And notice technically that gets you on to the old supply curve because this gap is the tax amount, the $3. So the 12 minus the 3 gets you at 9. So that's how you find the producer's price. So here we'd say that the consumers have a quantity of 80, price of 12. The producers have a quantity of 80 and a price of 9. Now looking at the burden of the tax, here's the thing. The price went up by $2 for the customer, so that's their burden. Their burden out of the $3 tax is 2, and for the producer, their burden was 1. Notice that it wasn't equally split, and it doesn't have to be. Here's the thing. What it's dependent on, whoever, how do we know who's going to have more of the burden? Well, it's all based on elasticity. If you need to review any elasticity, check out the previous module. Now, if the demand is perfectly elastic, as it is over here, well then, all the burden of the tax is actually going to be on the producers. Here's the easiest way to kind of remember this. 
the more inelastic group, whether it's supply or demand, the one that's relatively more inelastic will have more of the burden. Now in extreme cases like this, where a graph is perfectly elastic or inelastic, uh, one group's gonna have all of the burden. So here, the supply, since the demand is perfectly elastic, it's supply though is the one that's more inelastic. So they're gonna have more of the burden, and, and in this case, they're actually gonna have all of the burden. So here, the producer is gonna have all of the burden of the tax. Let's see why. Uh, again, whenever you're given a problem with the tax and a graph, the way to start is just move the supply curve by the amount of the tax and just see what happens. So here, uh, physically just move this up by $3 everywhere if there's a $3 tax, and if we just move this up, make the new intersection, make the new supply curve. Here's the thing, because the demand was flat, the new price is still gonna be at $10. So really, the consumers are paying none of the burden of the tax, before and after the tax, they're still paying 10 bucks. So what this means is that the producer then, uh, after paying the $3 to the government, is only gonna get to keep seven instead of 10. So they have the full $3 burden. In this case, the demand is more inelastic and it's perfectly inelastic. So here the consumers will have all the burden. Now let's see what happens when we have a $3 tax. Just move the supply curve up by three everywhere. So this point goes three up. This point, 100 comma 10 goes to 100 comma 13 and so on. And when you make the supply curve, you notice that the new intersection is, at, is actually at 113 because the demand was vertical there. It has to be at 100. So here actually it turns out that the new price that the consumers face is 13, which means they have to pay the full $3 tax, and uh, the producers in this case have none of the burden. They're still only, they're still gonna get 10 before and after the tax, because they're getting 13 from their customer, but not paying three to the government, so that's still 10. So, in summary, the more inelastic group has more of the burden of the tax. Now let's talk about the deadweight loss associated with taxes. Here's the thing, deadweight loss, what it really is, is it's how much less total surplus do we have uh, after the tax is imposed. Now, first let's look at what the surplus was before the tax. Before the tax, when we were over here at an equilibrium of 100 units with a price of 10, the consumer surplus was this triangle, right? Everything above 10 underneath the demand curve. The producer surplus was this triangle, everything underneath 10, this triangle, underneath 10 and above the supply curve, right? So really, Long story short, this whole thing was the total surplus. So let's look at how much less do we have now compared to all that. Well now, let's first look at the consumer surplus. They're facing a price of 12 instead of 10, and they're only buying 80 units. So their consumer surplus is actually only this area now. This is the new CS area. Uh, notice it's less than before by, you know, by this trapezoid. This trapezoid is how much it went down by because it used to also have that, right? It used to be above 10, now it's above 12. So it makes sense, consumers are worse off, they have to pay more and they get to buy fewer items. The producer surplus though, keep in mind, yeah, sure, they're getting 12, it might seem like they might be better off, they're getting 12 bucks from their customer instead of 10, but they have to pay the government three. So after paying the three, they're only getting nine. So really, they are worse off than before, for sure. Uh, instead of 10, they're getting nine, so their producer surplus will now be this. So if we still measure it from the original we still measure it, notice, from the original supply curve, not the new one, because we're kind of getting rid of the, we're not including the, the tax uh, in their producer surplus because they don't get to keep it. So in that case, and their true cost then is the original supply curve. So this is their new producer surplus. Notice, so that's also still less than before. It's less by that area, that trapezoid, because it used to be everything below 10, now it's everything below nine, so that's less area. So the CS and PS combined, these two shaded regions, it seems then like this, this sort of sideways home house, you know, house shaped region is the deadweight loss. But it's actually a lot less than that because not all that money is going to nobody. Because one thing we have to take into account now, which should always be included as a part of the total surplus, is government revenues. So the total surplus for society includes CSPS and any government revenues that, you know. We also have to subtract any government expenditures, but here there are no expenditures. So here, uh, what we need to include then is the government revenues. Now, how much money does the government make? They're making $3 per item. For how many items? Well, 80 that are transacted, so three times 80. 
Now we could look at that as this rectangle because this rectangle over here has a height of three, right? The gap between the two supply curves is the per unit tax of $3 times this quantity. So literally this length times width is the government revenue, G. So when you take all that into account, if you look at how much is shaded compared to before when we had all this, we still have a little bit less area. So notice, even though the government gets money, it always gets less than how much CS and PS combined went down by, and that's why there's still going to be this area that we don't capture, and that's dead weight loss here. This triangle is dead weight loss. So now let's look at what happens when there's a subsidy. Now, for those of you who don't know, a subsidy is the polar opposite of a tax. So a tax is when you have to give the government money for making an, an item, but a subsidy is when the government gives you money if you make an item. So let's say there's a $4 subsidy in this market. Now what happens is instead of the supply curve, which is the cost of making the item, right, marginal cost, instead of that being higher, higher costs, now it's like it costs you less to make the item because the government's paying for part of it. So the supply curve moves downward physically by the amount of the subsidy. Now technically that's an increase in supply because it's moving to the right, but uh, to measure it accurately you want to shift it downward. So what we're going to do is every point we're going to move it down by the four dollars. So for example this point 100 comma 10 is going to now be 100 comma 6, just four down. This other point on the supply curve 130 comma 12 is going to be 130 comma 8 and so on. So we're going to shift that over here. So this is the new supply curve. And notice that the intersection now between supply and demand is over here. So that means that the new price is going to be $8 that the customer pays. So the customer's price, price for the customer, is $8. Notice that that's less than what they used to pay. So instead of 10, they're now only paying 8, which means that they're better off. But not by, their price didn't go down by the full $4 subsidy, so just like with the tax, it's kind of split. So the consumers are better off because they're only paying $8 and they're buying 130 items. But the producers, let's see, they're getting only 8 from their customers now, but they're also getting 4 from the government. So 8 plus 4 is 12. So that's the producer's price. The price for the producers is $12 instead of 10. So now, to look at what happens as far as CS and PS and how those change, well, let's see. As you'll see, they're going to overlap a little bit, so it's easier to just focus on the change in CS and change in PS rather than the, the new level of it. So let's just look at how much CS changes by. The CS, old CS used to be this much, right? Everything above $10 underneath the demand. But now, since they're only paying eight, it's everything above eight. So it goes up, increases by this much. This is the increase in the consumer surplus, increase in CS. Now to look at the increase in producer surplus, well, let's ignore this shaded region for now. So the old producer surplus, if you can visualize it, used to be this much, right? Everything below 10, above the original supply curve. And now it's everything below 12 because they're getting more money. So everything below here and above that. So that's going to increase by this amount. So overall, you might be wondering, wow, if CS and PS are both going up, is there like a dead weight gain or something instead of a dead weight loss? Well, keep in mind the one thing we have to subtract from the total surplus is the government's expenditure. Because the government does have to pay $4 a unit for 130 units. So we have to subtract from this 4 times 130 because that's how much the government spends. And again, you might also be wondering, well, once we subtract that 4 times 130, what if that's less than how much these both are combined going up by? Then, you know, do we have a higher total surplus afterwards? Well, not really, because the amount that the government pays, 4 times 130, will be this much. So, because, and the reason is because this gap vertically from 8 to 12, that's 4 times a quantity of 130, that's a rectangle. Ah, so you have to subtract that much out, that's how much the government pays. So when you get rid of that, well, you actually got rid of more than we added, right? So overall, with the subsidy, we gain this much for PS, this much for CS, but we lose even more than that. Uh, this Specifically, this triangle, that's how much more we lose. So that's how much the dead weight loss is, because overall, when the subsidy is implemented, the total surplus is that much less than before. One final thing to notice about the subsidy is the new quantity in the market is higher than before. It went from 100 
up to 130 in this case. For every other type of government intervention, whether it was a ceiling, a floor, a quota, or a tax, the quantity was lowered by the government intervention, but the subsidy is the only case where government intervention raises the quantity, but there's still a deadweight loss. So, now let's take a look at a question from a student. Does the PS always go down with the tax? Aren't they getting more money from their consumers? Great point. With the tax, notice that the producers are physically collecting more money from their consumers than they were before. But we assume that they're the ones that who, uh, who have to pay the full tax amount to the government. So really, they're collecting less than the full tax amount from their, uh, from more from the consumer. So like with a $3 tax, they're probably only getting two more bucks from their consumers. So after getting two more, they still have to pay the three. So after that, they are necessarily getting less money per item uh, after paying the tax, and that's why their producer surplus will necessarily be lower. Now let's take a look at another question. Why does elasticity determine the tax burden? Great question. Now, we could obviously just look at the graphs that we did, as we did earlier and say that, all right, if you're more inelastic after doing the shifts, more of it happens to be on the group that's more inelastic, a practical way to think about why, inelastic really means that you're inflexible, right? That you really want that good. So a good that's really inelastic, you know, something like cancer medication, you want the medication no matter what, you want the treatment, and so that's why, uh, and that's the consumer. The consumer wants that no matter what. So if there's a tax on that, well then the producer who's more elastic could sort of take it or leave it, but the consumer is like, well, I really want it. So, you know, they're gonna end up facing more of the tax burden. Well, I hope you now understand economics better. And if you really wanna make sure you've mastered the concept, check out our active learning customized platform at besteconTutor.com. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one tutor right in front of you 24 seven. You can click here to try it out for free. And we'll be adding more topics and videos on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe below for the latest updates.